Hey guys, it's been a while since I did one of these tutorials, but um, we're going to build a church and I'm taking you through from the very beginning all the way to the end of the process. And I'm going to do something interesting at the end. I'm going to show you how I, how I cut out and prepare tiles for configuration into Foundry or really any virtual tabletop. Um, a lot of you have questions about how I export, what settings I use, how I crop them. So I'm going to show you all of that by the time we get to the end of this series. Now, this church took quite a while to make. So, you know, I'm, I'm running this at fast speed, but we're going to, uh, and I may try to slow down in certain areas too, um, to show you some certain tactics and techniques. Um, but this will either be a two or a three part series. And, uh, and then by the end, you'll, uh, you'll be able to see how I prepare this stuff for, uh, for use in other uh, VTTs. So with that, um, like I start most of my maps, I start with floor patterns to just block things out. It's easy to move them around. It helps me establish a color palette. It helps me establish where the rooms are going to lay out. And it's just a lot easier working with, you know, these polygons than, you know, with walls and other things that are more complex. So here I'm, you know, I know that I want double doors at the front of this church. I've looked up on the internet images of churches and layouts. So I'm going with a layout that I think makes sense for something that will be used as a battle map. And I'm going to make multiple floors on this church, including a basement. So I'm, you know, I'm just looking at my space. And I'm trying to develop something that, at least at the onset, you know, makes sense in terms of rooms and layout. And then I'm going to try to make that more complex. So at first here, I think I've landed on the basic materials, but I'll probably change those. And I'm going to use a wall, an interior wall, and I'm going to give it a specific hex code. It's very, very close to the, the already white code that, that we're using here. This is all Forgotten Adventures 2.0, by the way. This is all of the newest stuff in this map. And I'm giving everything that I lay in here that same hex code. So you don't see a perceptible difference in this, but when I go later to um, make alternative versions of this, that hex code's gonna come in handy. So I'm gonna make a dark version, an evil version, things like that. I've decided I'm gonna go with, you know, this first version is gonna be a, a holy church. I'm, very definitely um, modeling it after kind of a Roman Catholic sort of traditional church. And I decided I'm going to use a, a thicker wall on the outside, again, giving it that same unique hex code. And this is all just part of, you know, again, blocking it out and making sure that it makes sense. I'm thinking about where the doors might lay how tokens might move through it, whether it's enough space for certain types of things. You can see those hallways. I wanted to make sure there was a full square right down the middle for tokens to move and then ample room on the outside. Now I'm thinking about how to take this big, boring, monotonous space in the middle and break it up. So I've decided I wanna create some elevation here where the altar would go which of course makes sense. I'm using Forgotten Adventures' new um, shadow path that has the built-in wibbly wobbly line because I want to see how it works for, you know, for making stairs. And you can see that I drew my spline so that it matched the, you know, the raised area. And then I'm just deleting points so that I can get back to what the staircase will be. The reason I do that is I want the stairs to match the same curve, and that's just an easy way to do it. But I'm not decided yet on how I'm doing this, and I'm already noticing some problems with that built-in wibbly-wobbly line. The biggest one being that it only looks good when, when the path is at a certain width. If it's too big or too small, that wibbly-wobbly line is, becomes either too thick or too thin. Now I'm playing with the shadow paths to see if I can essentially just create a staircase inside of this, this floor pattern. 
putting the wibbly wobbly line in there, correcting my endpoints on it. I'm just evaluating whether I like this, this look or not. Theoretically, I should have been able to follow the same spline, but it doesn't line up quite right. So I'll mess with it for a little bit here. And now I turn off snap to grid and I just kind of place it where I want it to be. And as I'm looking at it, it just looks out of place. The lines are too thick. Just not really happy with it. So now I'll go back to the regular path. I'm going to fade my endpoints. I'm going to do the same thing here just so I can get the other staircase to, to match. Of course, I've run into the problem where I've got the staircase and that path conflicting. So now I've got to move things around in order to get to the points that I want to get to. And this is part of wrestling with dungeon drafts sometimes, especially because it doesn't have the same type of uh, layering system that you would find in something like Photoshop. So I'm liking how these stairs are, are blending in more. They don't have that hard wibbly wobbly line. And I'll put some shadows in to help sort of create the illusion of depth here. And then I'll put the wibbly wobbly line in manually with the width that I that I think looks right. I'm using the 40% line. That's generally what I've been defaulting to. It's, I think, the closest equivalent to what I was using with Krager's pack with the his 50% tool. Which isn't to say that you can't use the 60% line. It would just create, you know, some dark, deeper shadows. Maybe use them more narrow than, you know, rather than having them come all the way into the into the room. I think either one works, but. I'm attempting to standardize on the 40%, see if I like the overall look of the, of the map. And I'm just doing some final adjustments to make sure that these stairs have the right angles, that they look symmetrical on either side of the center there. And now what I want to do is I want to make these walls more interesting by creating some embellishments. So anytime you have a, a long straight wall, just like anytime that you have a, a big piece of floor that just kind of is monotonous, you want to look for ways to break it up. And if you've ever been in a church like this, you know that these sorts of embellishments exist and you've seen them you know, on, in church designs.
now I'll just adjust my floor so that they, they follow the, the wall. You'll notice I do not use the building tool. I have I abandoned that tool ages ago. Building tool is great for, you know, quick and, quick and dirty five minute dungeon draft maps, but it just, it's too unruly to really design stuff with. So I, I do all of my, my walls manually and all my floors manually. And now I'm going to use a trick that you've seen me use before. I'm going to make archways. And there's no archways in the asset pack, so I'm just going to make one out of shadow paths at level 700. And those will be doorways out. When I finally put this into Foundry, I'll leave those open so there won't be a doorway to open or close. It'll simply be, uh, it'll be unobstructing to the token's vision and it'll be very clear that there's a doorway there. And now is the step where I've got enough of my walls built that I want to start visualizing them in three dimensions. So this is where I add my, my initial layer of shadows. I've decided that I'm going to fade the ends here. And I'll have to address how those shadows meet in the corner. And in this case, I'm going to grab the new shadow circle tool. It's an object available with Forgotten Adventures. Uh, actually, here I'm, I'm going to attempt to use the corner tool. And you'll see I have the width of my shadow set to one. As long as your width is exactly one, it should meet up and snap to these corner shadows fairly well. And you don't have to get this exact, but you are looking to make it look like they're all married up. Alternatively, you can use the circle tool and you can, because it just blends into like a, a faded path, you can do faded paths in the circle tool and blend them together. There. Now I'm going to do the shadows on the outside. And by doing this step, again, it, it just helps you visualize the three-dimensional space. And it will help you decide what your next best step is. It lets you evaluate the room for what it is and, and start to make some decisions on how you can change it. So I know that I want to change this, this pattern. I need to break it up. And so I'm experimenting with other types of tiles that might help me do that. And what I've landed on is using the same floor pattern, but just a darker color, color that I think complements it. And here I've just made you know, really simple checkered walkway. But I think it really works. It, it complements the palette, doesn't look odd next to the other floor types. And because I like it this much, I'm going to help tie it into the room a little bit more by creating a trim using the same color. And you can see that as I add this trim, it starts to close in this big open space. It's the same space, but it's not looking so monotonous and open anymore. It's more interesting as if somebody designed it, which is what you would expect with the church. Usually there's a lot of investment in design. 
And then I'm just going to look at it and evaluate. Do, do I think it makes sense? Does it need any other enhancements? And because this is a church, I am going to just lay out the pews. And I'm thinking about where my doorways are. I'm thinking about where the squares are, that if I had NPCs sitting in here, could I have two NPCs per pew in a way that they can fit on a square? So if I lay it out like this, I've got enough room for, for my players to walk through the space and also sit in the space. Now I'm going to take the path tool it's the double-sided path. Rather than using what I usually use is the circle object, and I just spam it underneath. This is a nice uniform path. Because these are just straight pieces, I can just lay that path down, and it makes some nice drop shadows underneath these pews. Those pews, by the way, I put at, I think, level 200. And then those drop shadows, I put at level 100. I always try to put furniture at level 200 or level 300. 300 maybe if it's a table, but 200 most often is where my furniture will go, especially if it doesn't have to go under or over anything. It gives me enough room to put other patterns and shadows underneath it without creating something I have to redo later. And now what I want to do is I want the altar to be interesting. I don't want to just pick an altar out of the out of the objects. Those those look too, I don't know, designed or something. And I want this altar to be unique. I want it to be big. And I want it to be flexible enough for the other kinds of churches, the other motifs that I'm going to be doing with this. So I'm using the floor pattern. And I'm using it higher up in terms of layers. And I'm going to attempt to do some, some custom masonry here. I'm going to try to use shadow patterns, in this case, shrinking and growing patterns, to make it look like, you know, it's one contiguous piece, but maybe it's got some, some sort of molded or contouring happening with it. And it's always some delicate work to be creating custom pieces like this. You, you end up laying things down, redoing it, changing how you're approaching it, changing your levels. Here I'm putting the, using the wibbly wobbly line to, to help make this look like a completed asset. Without it, it's just a flat piece of floor. Here's another trick I've got. If you use the wibbly wobbly line and you fade both ends to it, you can make, and you make it very thin, you can make subtle lines that work really well for lots of things. You can use these subtle lines to make like tents and, and like, you know, canvas seams and, um, you know, hints at, at differences and, um, you know, how these uh, materials might, you know, have nuanced sort of uh, textures. Now I've realized that I'm not exactly on the right um, layer, so I had to move things around. Now, what I want to do with these pieces these are actually altars. I'm just using them to create feet rather than me having to go through and create all those manually. So I've still got the same altar top, but I'm just using objects to help create a more finished look. And now I'm having to readjust my layers. And then I also decided I don't know that I want that color for the altar. And I want the color to match the pieces underneath it a little bit more. So I, I changed it to more of a blue. And I just played around with the, the, the hue until it, it started to match the feet. And now I'm going to do just a little bit of cleanup work to 
you know, have it kind of overlap those feet in the right way. And it's starting to look like, you know, an actual piece. I'm picking a width of my wibbly wobbly line that matches closely to what the, the, the wibbly wobbly line embedded in that artwork is. You notice that, you know, those, the artwork that comes with Forgotten Adventures, a lot of it has that imperfect line. That's what the wibbly wobbly line does for you. It gives you an imperfect, you know, pixelated line that looks better to the eye. And because this is a finished piece, I am experimenting with using highlights on it. You'll also see that if you look closely at the artwork, you see there's highlights embedded in that. I'm just doing the same thing. And this is super subtle, but I think it's effective when you're making your own custom pieces is, is showing that, you know, they're made of real like solid material and it's maybe slightly reflective. And it's all just meant to, you know, help sort of fine tune with the details. And now I'm going to dress it up in a way that I think you would find it in a church. And I'm feeling pretty happy with the basic design of it. And now I'm going to start doing some shadows underneath it using the, the circle tool that comes with Forgotten Adventures new uh, shadows and effects pack. It's an extremely helpful tool. I use it all the time. You'll see me use it a lot here. And now because I don't have, you know, the large candles you would find in a church as an asset, I'm going to create them with other assets. So, you know, that's a... That's a, a, a plant pot. And then I'm, I'm just putting some larger and smaller candles over it. That pot has a nice gold rim to it. So I think it works for what I'm going for here. And I'll put some shadows underneath that because the way that light works around physical objects anywhere, a physical object touches another one, the light will gather in shadows. Same thing for under this book. And now what I realize, if you ever spent any time in a church, is there's always a place to put your holy book. And so I need to do these in the right order because I don't have a lot of layers to operate in. So I'm going to put my books in first. I'm going to try to make them look relatively randomly spaced. And then I'm going to use that same exact pew. I'm going to flip it around, shrink it, and put it underneath. And I think it makes a pretty believable uh, book holder. And that's how you can expand your, your palette beyond what the artists have created for you, is just kind of look at things with fresh eyes and be a little bit creative in how you think they might link together. Now that I'm pretty happy with the main sanctuary, at least as a starting point, I'm going to start to develop the rooms around it. And I've decided that I want to I want to make this again another uh, archway. Don't want actual doors here. And when these get into the foundry or roll twenty environment, you just you leave the doors off completely, and they just pass through. I realize that I needed to finish my, my shadows now on this other side. And 
and you'll notice that the scale on those corner pieces is one and then the scale on the shadow pattern is one and that's again to help them meet up. Uh, you missed this because I had a problem with my recording but I put a bunch of candles on here. I used my scatter tool and just alternated between white and, and yellow which you can do and then just kind of sort of carefully place them along what was essentially just some items I assembled with stairs. I also put in some narrow windows, which is something new with the latest uh, 2.0 Forgotten Adventures, which I really like. And now I'm just really embedding these things in shadows. I want them to seem like they're part of the environment. I'll even put shadows on top of them like you just saw. And you, you see how they look like they're lit. That's not a light. That's actually an object that's available with AOA's, um, I think it's his fire and electricity pack. It's something called a spot. He's got four spots and they're colorable, which makes them really flexible and useful. And when you color them like yellow, like I did, you can light candles with them without using the light tool. So it gives you more precise ability to show lighting. And here I am just using stair pieces and planks to assemble a kneeler where somebody would come and light a candle and kneel and pray. So again, you can't find it in your asset pack, so just make it. Planks and stair pieces can accomplish a lot. Uh, everything you see on that, that whole assembly is just planks and staircases staircase pieces. And now I want to figure out what is going to help this piece of floor kind of break up a little bit. I'm just looking at how things compare. I just really enjoy looking through and adventuring through all of the new options that are available to us also. I'll pick up an idea, like I probably saw three things there that I wouldn't use in this map, but that I'm taking a mental note of to use in other maps. And here I've landed on, you know, a pretty decent concept, you know, just a, a concrete that runs through breaks up the monotony of the of the bricks. And if I put it around my doorways there, I can help imply visually that there's a there's a doorway that exits to that side. And I like that concrete so much that I'm going to see if it works elsewhere in my map. You'll see how I don't connect this. If I did, it would it would have closed that polygon. Instead, I have to do some tricks to you know, get them really close to each other and then ultimately just move the the um, the points, go into edit point mode, and you move them to where you want them to be. That lets you create you know really odd shapes like I'm creating right here. Just kind of working around dungeon drafts sort of function. And now you can move things forward and back in terms of layer, which is helpful now. There's something I didn't like about that particular shape or how it was engineered, so I just redid it. And in this video today, we will complete a lot of this level. We've got a little bit more to go tomorrow, and then we're going to go to level two. And I'm going to show you how to, how to approach your second level in a way that makes more interesting maps. So, you know, anticipating using, um, you know, having a map that, that shows down into the sanctuary from up above. You see, I'm also trying to break this up into multiple polygons. 
because I may want to make changes later. And if you have one big massive polygon that's super complex, you've got to delete the whole thing and start over. And I'm also going back and I'm making sure that I'm applying that custom hex code everywhere. You don't see the change, but when it comes to recoloring this and, and reskinning it later, it'll save me tons and tons and tons of time. And now I realize that that concrete trim will help me tie the whole design together. And so I'm incorporating it into the sanctuary as well, which breaks up that big top polygon and it, it makes it flow, the design really flow from room to room. There's my obligatory double doors for any good church. When I ultimately get this into foundry, I'm gonna have a big bright light in the sanctuary that pours out through those doors when they open up. There will also be some really sort of beautiful music, uh, kind of church uh, choir music that pours out when the door opens. It will make a really nice effect for players. When I do the dark versions of the church, um, I will have very different, you know, the mono uh, some maniacal, you know, evil uh, chanting and things like that, depending on the motif I'm going for. One of my biggest laments with Forgotten Adventures is the lack of statues. I do like that we've got more colors at least, but... I really, really wish there were more statues available to us with, with FA. I'm sure there will be over time, but as it is right now, it's, it's pretty meager. There are other options for statues out there, but in terms of what I can use commercially and show in videos, I've got my limitations. Now I know I want stairs here. And so I'm looking through my options and I'd like stairs that sweep and are sort of molded to the wall. Then the wall has this interesting shape and I want to maintain that shape. So I'm looking to see if I can piece it together with objects. I'm just, just not that crazy about how it's looking. So again, I just decide I'm going to make my own. And whenever you decide to embark on making your own custom stuff like this, you're, you're going to be fiddling around with it. But I just want you to see my process so it doesn't seem daunting to you. If you decide that you want to make something, you can totally make it. When you're making stairs, it's good to snap to grid as much as possible, but inevitably you're going to fall in between um, half squares and you're going to have to eyeball it as well as you can. So I'm doing the wibbly wobbly line over these stairs. And I'm debating on whether I have a stare at that last landing there, thinking about what the upper floor is going to look like. And I'm kind of running out of room here. So I think I'll stop there. And I'm going to play with my transitions in and out. So if you sh go from shrink to none and you're going up in that direction, you can see that it implies that there's a, you know, a, a, a grade in terms of that stair going up. It's not perfect, but good enough. And then I feel like the floor next to that isn't going to end in this abrupt cobble, that it's going to have some trim continuing along there. So I'm just creating that.
And now I need a banister, and I already know I'm not going to find what I want in the asset pack, so I know I'm going to have to create my own. So I started by drawing a polygon at a different level, and then I'll draw shadows underneath it. And you can see I'm already starting to define that banister as, as a separate physical object. And then I'm going to run some very thin um, paths that shadow paths that fade out, and I'm going to give it that nice rounded look. And then I'll run a wibbly wobbly line over that to help finish the edge of it. And I'll just use my spline tool at the end to match the curve at the end. And I'm feeling pretty happy with that. It feels like a solid. Um, you know, stone banister that was maybe carved or chiseled with the same materials that was used in the, in the rest of the staircase. And I just want to do, again, just make sure that my shadows are implying the right distance and depth, that they're surrounding that piece properly. Now I'm thinking about my access points here. And I've decided to go ahead and make these doors. And I'm putting the doors on a full square so that a player could walk through that door and not be in an odd position. And now that I've done the custom stair on the one side, it's, it's incumbent on me to mirror it on this side. So. I'm going to go about the work of, of mirroring that stair. Just trying to get the same width down because I didn't take note of it before. really do need to watch where you can't snap to grid. You can see if you get the angle off a little bit, it looks odd. We're coming pretty close to the end of this video. In the next one, we'll, we'll finish this floor, and, uh, and then we'll go up to the second floor and start working there. And I'll show you how to work with you know, one, one level that's sort of transparent to the next level below it. And there will be some cleanup work that I do with this level. The stair, for example, doesn't quite, isn't quite symmetrical with the one on the other side. So I'll be doing some cleanup and sort of getting this ready for, you know, finishing the decorating and the storytelling on this level and then, and then be able to carry that on upstairs. I do plan on making a roof uh, for this in a basement. So those things will uh, will come together as well. Not sure if I'll do the basement on this video, but you can see already, you know, starting off with a couple of polygons, and we've already got a very believable space for a church. We've got a color scheme that works. We've got a, a layout that makes sense that can allow for gameplay. You know, we've got the, you know, the basics of the space and, 
you know, like magic, you can turn nothing into something. And so that's it. Um, hopefully you guys like this and then, uh, you know, stay tuned for the next one. And then again, by the end, I'll show you how to put all of this together and export it into a virtual tabletop. Uh, thanks so much and have fun making your maps.